T-minus 7 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. TLS is go for orbiter access arm retract. And Discovery OTC from the processing team of Discovery to the crew of Discovery. Enjoy the ride. Thank you very much. Thanks for all the work you did getting this uh, ready to go and uh, appreciate all, all your work. And for those watching, get ready to witness the majesty and the power of Discovery as she lifts off one final time. Orbiter access arm retracting. Orbiter test conductor John Craxon talking with Space Shuttle Commander Steve Lindsay. And NTD CTLS. We've inserted a hold and the clock will hold at T minus five minutes. Copy. Thank you. Go ahead. I got verbal confirmation from the, the uh, 45th Wing Commander. We are go. And we do not need SROs go. So I would like you to proceed. Copy that. NTD, was that uh, verification that the range will support today's launch? You need to press on. Pick up the clock on your mark. Copy that. And SRO and TD, need to put this, uh, your hold switch to proceed position. The final helium purge of the three main engines is underway in preparation for main engine start. We are go. Copy. Final test of the flight control surfaces is underway. This is a pre-programmed pattern of movements designed to verify the readiness of the flight control surfaces, the elevons, speed brakes, and rudder. Minus 3 minutes and 30 seconds and counting. Final aero surface checks are complete. Discovery's three main engines will be gimbaled through a pre-programmed series of maneuvers as a final test before launch. The gaseous oxygen vent hood, or beanie cap, is slowly being retracted away from the top of the external tank. Close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. Top down work. Orbiter test conductor John Craxon requesting pilot Eric Bow clear the caution and warning memory system. All systems are go. About 90 seconds away from the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery on her final mission. T minus one minute, 10 seconds and counting. The liquid hydrogen tank inside the external tank is now at the proper flight pressure. T minus one minute and counting. The ground launch sequencer will verify that the three main engines are ready to start. The booster joint heaters are being deactivated at this time. T minus 48 seconds and we're transferring to orbiter internal power. Discovery is now running on a f it's, uh, three onboard fuel cells. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start at T minus 31 seconds. TLS is go for auto sequence start. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. 20 seconds. The sound suppression water system has been activated, protecting Discovery and the launch pad from acoustical energy waves. Go for main engine, go for main engine start. We have main engine start. Two, one, booster ignition, and the final liftoff of Discovery. A tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Shuttle now rolling over onto its back with a ten-minute ride into orbit. Discovery now making one last reach for the stars. through the area of maximum pressure, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes supersonic. Discovery Houston, you are go at throttle up.
Will Commander Steve Lindsay acknowledging the call from Capcom Charlie Hobai as Discovery's three main engines throttle back up. Lindsay is joined on the flight deck by pilot Eric Bowen, mission specialist Al Drew, and Nicole Stott. Mission specialist Mike Barrett and Steve Bowen. Discovery's three main engines are burning fuel at a rate that would drain an average swimming pool in about 25 seconds. The engines combined with the solid rocket boosters produce more than 7 million pounds of thrust. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, we're standing by for separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. Discovery now traveling 2,695 miles an hour. It's altitude 24 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 29 miles. Booster separation confirmed. Discovery's guidance is now converging as the shuttle's onboard computers fine-tune the flight. Two minutes, 25 seconds into the flight, Discovery traveling 3,189 miles an hour. Its altitude 37 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 53 miles. Discovery now getting a boost into orbit from its twin orbital maneuvering system engines on either side of the shuttle's tail. These two engines will burn for two minutes and 32 seconds. Discovery, you are two-engine TAL. Uh, we do have updates to your no-com mode boundaries, and we did launch late into pane one, our only pane. The uh, contingency aboard boundaries we'll use are in plane pl plus 230. Let me know when you're ready to copy the new press to ATO and press to MECO. Okay, copy all. Two-engine TAL and ready to copy. Pinto, you're press to ATO 11.9. Presto Mico, 15.4. That's a good read back on both. Discovery can now make it to emergency landing sites in Europe should one of the engines fail, but all three engines continue to perform as expected. Capcom Charlie Hoba updating the crew there with some uh, updated uh, time information due to the later than planned launch. Three minutes and 50 seconds into the flight, the shuttle traveling 4,700 miles an hour. Discover you are negative return. Negative return. Discovery now traveling too high and too fast to return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of an engine failure. But all three main engines continue to function as expected. The shuttle now traveling 5,200 miles an hour. Its altitude 62 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 170 miles. Four minutes, 45 seconds into the flight, Discovery traveling 6,200 miles an hour. It's altitude 66 miles. Downrange from KSC, 229 miles. Here inside Mission Control, Flight Director Richard Jones and his team continue to monitor the progress of Discovery's flight. All systems are continuing to perform as expected. Discover you are pressed to ATO. Pressed to ATO. And that call from Capcom Charlie Hobai indicating that Discovery has enough energy to make it to a lower than planned orbit should one engine fail at this point. However, all three engines continue to burn as expected. Discover you are single engine ops three. Single engine ops three. Discovery's engines are now swiveling to roll the shuttle to a heads-up position to get better communication with NASA's tracking satellites. Discovery your single-engine Zaragoza 104. Single-engine Zaragoza 104. 
Discovery can now make it to emergency landing sites in Europe should two engines fail at this point, but the flight continues to go well. Six minutes, 24 seconds into the flight, the shuttle traveling 9,800 miles an hour. Its altitude 67 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 447 miles. Miko, BIM for you, nominal shutdown on all three, and Pinto, you'll be go for the plus X and go for the pitch. Chris D'Amico, nominal shutdown, go for the plus X, go for the pitch. Good read back. That call from Capcom, Charlie Hobai, indicating that Commander Steve Lindsay has a go to press to main engine cutoff as expected in about a minute and a half. Discover you are single engine press. Single engine press. Seven minutes, 15 seconds into Discovery's flight. The shuttle traveling 12,700 miles an hour. Its altitude 66 miles. Downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 615 miles. Discovery's engines now throttling back to keep the forces on the crew and the shuttle to three times that of gravity. The shuttle traveling 14,000 miles an hour. Less than 30 seconds to go in Discovery's powered flight. We're coming up on main engine cutoff. Main engine cutoff confirmed. Space Shuttle Discovery now in space. External tank separation confirmed. Commander Steve Lindsay will steer the shuttle up to the uh, forward portion of the external tank so that the umbilical well camera can capture some images of it. Discovery, we saw a nominal Miko Ohms 1 not required. Preliminary TIG for Ohms 2 3730. Welcome to you and your veteran crew back to space. Copy, uh, no Ohms 1 required. 3730 preliminary TIG, and uh, thanks a lot. Good to be here.